rise together Stronger than ever now We rise up We rise up now Our voices matter The chains we shatter now We rise up We rise up now I'm mad You mad We matter now I'm coming We're coming The truth comes out <laughs> hey everyone! Oh my gosh! What's up? Here we are at the kingdom the letters, with our song "Unbounded" all together. One of those before me, on wings of glory. Now we rise up, we rise up now. I could just keep playing the song forever. And for those of you who are brand new, this is "Unbounded" that we all wrote together here at the kingdom and i want to welcome you i want to welcome you i want to welcome you to this powerful session of the kingdom and i feel really called today to start with the poem that we had from our very 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 first session and if this is your first time here at the kingdom i want you to type in first time in the chat box so that we know that it's your first time and you're going to see our community welcome you and welcome you and welcome you. And if this is not your first time as we normally do, just type in where you're coming in from. And um, we're in for a very special session today, actually planned. I've been planning for a couple weeks the session that we're doing today. So the poem that really, you know, came to life as the kingdom was being birthed when I was at Esalen is this. It says, this is the kingdom. This is for everyone. Lesbian, gay, trans, bi, young, old, black, white. Queer, hippie, broke, and fabulous, and straight people too. All are welcome to the magic that happens. All are welcome to the magic that happens. This is not about telling you what to believe, but to connect you to something greater, to bring some relief. To the struggles and pain that carry us forward, you cannot stop us because we are the warriors. We'll come together, we'll sing and we'll cry, we'll learn and we'll share as we all turn the tides. You'll learn wisdom teachings from the world's greatest lessons and connect to your power and call in your blessings. This isn't about inspiration. This is about action. Because only then, only then can we break from this faction. Welcome to the kingdom, the kingdom inside. We rise together, and together we rise. And I felt so inspired when I read that again this week because when I come back to, literally, like that poem was written before I even fully knew what the kingdom was going to be, and I come back to the root of that intention. And I think one of the things that's happened is that that intention is literally like that vision, that intention is what's manifested here. We are inspired, we're inspired into action. We're coming together across divides and together we rise. And so here we are at the kingdom. And I see you, Hawaii, Tim and Monique and Mary Teresa and Evie. And hello, Chris, your first time. Ah, Seattle, Connecticut. Welcome, Sharon, your first time. Welcome, Susan and Carrie. And ah, Wendy, first time. And Amy, first time. And Jennifer, first time. And there's so many first timers here that I, some of your names aren't there. So otherwise, I would say your name. And welcome, welcome, welcome to all of us. And welcome to the new faces and those of you who've been here for a long time. So since we have a lot of new people, let me tell you something, how this works. I normally say this every week anyway. So what we believe here at the kingdom, as you can tell by the poem, is that all beliefs are welcome here. We believe that all biologies are welcome here. And we believe in the power of music and art to open our hearts and minds. And we believe 
that wisdom can come from many places. So sometimes you'll hear me weave in spiritual text, sometimes things will be from science, sometimes things will be weaved together and melded together, and I'll bring in leaders and experts from many different fields and sometimes interview them. You know, one of my kind of like jokes when I was uh, putting this together was like, I want this to feel like church, Super Soul Sunday, and a TED Talk. And so sometimes it's, you know, there's always slides, there's always learning, there's always actions, but sometimes it's interviews, sometimes it's just me, but we weave together an incredible, nourishing body of wisdom that allows us to grow and expand. And here at The Kingdom, we believe in an expanded definition of self, and we don't just honor or tolerate each other's differences, but we know that we are stronger because of them, and we rise together, all 1,049 of you. <laughs> We rise together in our 23rd session from Puerto Vallarta to Australia and beyond. And so as we go through these lessons, this is how it works every week. We begin with either a poem or some song or some art. And then for you first timers, we're going to do, we always do a prayer and I'll guide us through a short prayer. But then what you have the permission to always do is I'll give us about 60 seconds of silence. And in that 60 seconds of silence, I invite you to welcome in your own personal prayer or intention. And then we go into a teaching. We'll do a little practice to help you embody the teaching. You'll have your golden nugget, which you'll see, and then an action to help take you forward in the next level of your own becoming. And I have a very, 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 very special topic for you all today that I think you're gonna be very excited about. So all of that being said, let's pray. <laughs> Let's go into our prayer. So if you would, you can just place your hands over your heart. And we'll just anchor into this space together. God, spirit, universe, all that is, all that ever has been, and all that ever will be, we thank you. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for opening our hearts and minds. And thank you for these thousands of people from all over the world, from the podcast to the recordings to the people here live who have come together in a space of love and connection and transformation. May the words that are shared here today by each of us in the chat box and beyond help us and inspire us to manifest and live our dreams. Thank you for bringing us here today. Thank you for our health. Thank you for our well being. And thank you for reminding us that no matter what is going on in our lives, that we are not alone, that we are protected, and that we rise together. And so this is your moment now for your personal intention or prayer. I'll give you about 60 seconds to invite that in. God, spirit, universe, all that is, all that ever has been, and all that ever will be, we thank you. May every word that's spoken here be used for the benefit of all. So it is. Ashe, Aho, Salam, Amen, Satnam, Om, Shalom. Thank you. Thank you. Here we are. <laughs> Here we are at the kingdom. Loving you all so much. And I'm so excited for this session today <clears throat> because this session is on the power of manifesting. Are y'all ready? <laughs> the power of manifesting. And now I know that so many of you already know 
that we have Manifest 2020 coming up, Manifest 2021 coming up, excuse that typo, on New Year's Eve, which I'll talk more about later. And we have our 40 Days to Transformation program coming up that so many of you are already on the wait list for, but I'll talk about all that later. But what I wanna talk about as, and the reason I'm bringing that up is because in this part of the year, with the solstice coming up, and you all know all the things that are happening in the stars and Jupiter and all the stuff that's going on to help us upgrade our energy. And as we head into the new year, we have this ritual in our world right now. We have this ritual that at this turning of the year, that we choose a new beginning, that we choose this moment to help us manifest our dreams. And if you have ever heard me teach manifesting before, I need you to buckle up your seatbelts because I've learned a whole bunch of new stuff and I'm gonna help you take this to the next level today. Even for those of you who've done the Manifest New Year before, we've I've literally completely redone the workbook, everything, okay? Because it's not that what you learned before is wrong, but it's that we are taking this to the next level into action. And what I'm gonna do in this session today is I'm gonna help you learn three of the keys, the big keys to manifesting. So that regardless of whether you come to New Year's Eve or you join the 40-day program, you at least have the beginning steps. And I'm gonna teach you everything that I can in this time that we have together today. We have about an hour, okay, together right now, an hour left. And for those of you who wanna take this further, you already know that we have these programs for you and that I, I always offer scholarships to everything, so it's not a money thing, okay? And so what we're gonna get into right now and I know I see Anna said, I do not want to manifest 2020. No, we're going into 2021. And so here's the deal, okay? Y'all know I love to get into the etymology of the words a little bit here. So when we look at the word manifest and manifesting, I want to show you where this comes from because I think you're going to be shocked when you hear this. When I started digging into this a little bit more, I was blown away. So I'm going to probably butcher this word, but this is like old Latin, okay? manifestation okay and check out what this is like the earliest version of this word okay look at what it means spirit or ghost becomes rendered perceptible that's some of the earliest uses of the word manifesting manifestation when a spirit or ghost becomes rendered perceptible, meaning you can see the spirit or ghost, something in, in the real world. And that's where this word comes from. Now, I want you to follow me here because this gets real crazy. And I will tell you all, somebody already said, Susan said, I'm taking notes. Y'all gonna want your notebooks or your phones because just trust me, okay? We got a lot, I have a lot of keys for you today. So then it goes to this, all right? Manifestare, or maybe it was manifestare, manifestare, which is, the action of disclosing what is secret, obscure, or unseen. An exhibition, a demonstration. Check this one out. Caught in the act. Are y'all following me on this right now? Caught in the act. So before we ever used manifest in spirituality, okay? Before we've ever used manifest in, you know, like, manifesting your dreams or like accomplish your life. Look at the, the word choice is really important. When a ghost or a spirit becomes visible, caught in the act. Now let's continue. This is so fun for me as you can tell, <laughs> okay? So caught in the act. Now, the next place we go when we're getting close <clears throat> is manifestus. Manifestus, so this is going into ancient or to, to like ancient languages, plainly apprehensible, clear, apparent, and provided by direct evidence. And again, caught in the act. Now check this out, okay? When we're following this all the way through, these words, what we see is that when we get to manifest as we use it today, the biggest definition of this word is clearly revealed. Clearly revealed. 
And so you see that one of the elements of manifesting from moment one, okay, of this word even existing in language ever has to do with something from within, something hidden, spirit, ghost, all these things becoming evident and being clearly revealed. And so what that means is that with manifesting, you're not making something happen. You're revealing what is happening. Are you following me? Are you following me? When we're manifesting, you're not making something happen. Most of us think we're trying to make something happen. I'm trying to make this thing happen in my life so I need to manifest it. But you're not making anything happen. What manifesting is, is revealing what has already been happening. It's making that spirit, that ghost of you show up in the physical form, in the physical realm. And so now when we look back at this clearly revealed, clear, apparent, caught in the act, unseen, disclosing what is secret or obscure. And I love this caught in the act word because it's interesting because there's this element when you look at how it was used in old language, it's they're talking about, ooh, I see it. I see what's really happening. And so this caught in the act aspect means you can't hide. And you wanna know why? The big reason why here is because you are manifesting all the time. You're manifesting all the time, my dears, whether you like it or not. And so the whole point when we talk about manifesting right now is we're actually talking about doing this consciously because you're already manifesting. Everything that you've done today already is already going to manifest an outcome. Who you are being now is already going to manifest in an outcome. And so when we think about manifesting in this way, right? And I'm just gonna say one thing that I forgot to say because I see Emily doing it already. If you're new to this community, one of the things that we do, you can see the chat box is super active. One of the things that we do is when you hear me say something or somebody else says something in the chat box that you love, we throw our little prayer hands up, our little like amen hands. This is the amen corner. Or as Alonzo liked to call it, would you call it the grandmother's corner, the, the mother's something? So we throw our hands up in the chat. And if you can't throw your hands up, you can just throw little smiley faces in. And the smiley faces are your option if you don't have the little hands. And so let me go back to this now, okay? Because I just want to make sure we have this energy moving here because I, I love feeling you all. And so the revealing aspect of this and the fact that you're manifesting all the time, whether you know it or not, whether you're consciously doing it or not. And so when we're thinking about manifesting now in the context that we're thinking about it now, what we're saying is actually that we want to, listen to me carefully, this is the part that's gonna blow, I'm gonna switch some things up for you here. What we're really saying is that what we wanna do is reverse engineer the process of what is already naturally occurring in our lives already. Because no matter if you're spiritual or connected or praying or paying attention or not paying attention, you're already manifesting. What's happening in your life now is a result of who you are. And so what we're really wanting to do when we're saying we want to consciously manifest something, because again, the manifesting is already happening. So what we're saying is we want to consciously manifest something. And so what we're asking ourselves to do is reverse engineer the process. Let me turn the, I'm about to turn the music down and everything right now so that you guys can hear me clearly on what's about to come next. Okay. Because this is big. So this is the way that manifesting is already working in your life. Always, always has been, will be every day, whether you're conscious of it or not, who you are leads to what you manifest. Okay. So who you are automatically leads to what you manifest. This is the caught in the act. This is the, what is happening in your spirit being revealed. 
in tangible form in your real life. Here's how you reverse engineer the process. Follow me. We go from the right. Go, we're going the other way. We go to what do you want to manifest? And then we reverse it and ask the question, well, then who do you have to be? Because if who you are is already giving you what you manifest, what you see in your life, giving you the ability, it's catching you in the act, it's revealing, it is making clear, making clear. Then when we reverse it, we ask ourselves the same question backwards. What do you want? And then that leads you to who do you have to be? Now, here's the thing, okay? Here's the big thing. I'm not saying, and you all, many of you who've been following my teachings will have heard me say this many times. This is not about, notice it doesn't say, what do you do? I'm not saying, what do you want to manifest? So what do you do? It's what do you want to manifest? So who do you have to be? Who do you have to be? And this is because you cannot fake it. You literally, and I mean like literally, have to transform who you are. You have to transform your energy. You have to transform at your level of being. And this is exactly why I host Manifest on New Year's every year. This is exactly why I'm doing 40 days to transformation. We're not calling it 40 days to change, 40 days of action, 40, it's transform. You know, it's really interesting, fire, fire. And are y'all following me right now? Cause this is just the beginning. I ain't even gave you the three tips yet. This is just the setup, okay? So fire, if I had a lighter right now, the symbol of transformation universally, fire transforms, okay? And so what we have to do is activate the energy of the fire within ourselves. Desire is a part of what activates that fire, the desire of our lives. And when we activate that desire, we get this burning in us. It feels like inspiration. It feels like motivation. It feels like activation. It feels like ignition. And that fire burning inside of us is what gives us the energy to transform. But what most of us do is we go straight into the doing. And you've heard, I'm not even going to get into this because you've heard me say this so many times, all of you, that it can't just be about the doing. It's also about who you are being. And it is through that beingness that you manifest what you want in your life. All right, let me break this down in some practical ways for you all. And I see you, Eric, and Mary Teresa, and Evie, and Monique, and Steph, and Emily, and Magdalena. I see you all. I see you, okay? So somebody asked this. Magdalena asked a great question. She said, don't we have to just be ourselves? That's a really interesting question, Magdalena, because what we have to remember is, yes, but what, which part of yourself? Who is the self? What, what are you being your conditioning? Are you being your trauma? Or are you being connected into that space? That higher self, that higher sense of consciousness, consciousness that is manifested here in this physical form to be something on this planet. And so yes, it is about being yourself, but we're talking about yourself with the capital S. Okay, I love, Oprah always says that, self with a, a cast capital S. And hey, Gina, see you here too. So let me get into this with you all right now, all right? So what I'm going to talk about here is the three keys to manifesting. Three big keys. And if we have time, I'll give you a fourth one because there, there's more than three, but I want to give you three here. And the rest of them we'll cover on New Year's because a lot of this that I'm talking about right now, I'm not going to talk about on New Year's because we ain't going to have time. Okay, so I want you all, since you're here in the kingdom, you're here with me every week, I want you to have the key, all the keys, okay, <laughs> so that we can really keep rising together. So first thing that any of you who have my book and any of you who've heard me teach have heard me talk about before is the reticular activating system. The reticular activating system. Now, 
The reticular activating system and your vision go hand in hand. This is how you create your vision for your life. And when I'm talking about the reticular activating system, those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry, I'm going to get into it. It's called the RAS. That's what I'll call it, your RAS, your reticular activating system. And if you've heard me teach this before, listen up, because I'm putting it in a new context here. So the first thing that we have to do when we're manifesting is, when remember the process. It says, what do you want? Who do you have to be? So the first thing that we have to identify is, what do we want? What the hell do we, what do you actually want? And so many of us are even afraid to answer that question. We don't know how to answer that question, right? What is it that you are trying to manifest if we're reverse engineering? And that's where the vision comes in. Now, I like to describe this process scientifically because, again, I see some of you said you like it when I become a science nerd, which I do every once in a while. And this is where the reticular activating system comes in. How many of you have heard me teach this before? I haven't, I don't think I've taught it this year. So I'm going to get into it again a little more deeply here before we go into the other keys. So your RAS, the reticular activating system works like this. I first learned it through my friend, Eva Clay, who's incredible and her birthday is coming up. So basically what the RAS is, is it's a part of your brain that helps you notice things. It's a part of your brain that brings your attention to things. And what we know is the practice of our attention is what actually makes our life grow. Where They say where attention goes, energy flows. Where attention goes, energy flows. And so what you have to know is this is the way that the RAS works. So you're experiencing a lot of stuff all throughout your life and your day. You're hearing me talking right now. You see colors, you see light, you see images. Basically, our everything in the world is like competing for our attention all day. And so your RAS, what it does is it filters out what's important and what's not because your brain has a limited amount of storage capacity. So it needs some kind of filter to go, okay, based on where I'm going in my life, based on my health, based on my safety, based on who I want to be, follow me, I'm going to filter certain things out, meaning I'm not going to even pay attention to them. I'm going to discard them. And other things I'm going to retain and hold on to and let them integrate into who I'm being. And so your RAS is that filter, okay? Y'all following me? So this is the science-y part. Yes, and Mary Teresa says it's also in the book on Stay Woke. So what happens is if your basically your RAS, what it helps you do is zero in on exactly what it wants to find all the time. So let me give you a very, very clear example of how this works in like, because it sounds kind of woo-woo right now, but let me tell you how it works in a very practical sense. So let's say you lose your phone. Okay. You lose your phone. I had just lost my AirPods a couple months ago. So let's say you lose your phone. And what happens then is once you realize you've lost your phone, your RAS activates and places attention on your phone. And so you'll go run around your house, looking through every bag, reaching into your purse, looking under the bed, looking between the couches to try to find your phone. And what your RAS will do as you're scanning is it will instantly, because your attention is on the phone, it will instantly just dissolve and discard everything that doesn't look like a phone. It will even tune your body and your nervous system so that when you reach into your purse or your backpack and you're reaching for your phone, you don't even have to look with your eyes. Your RAS tunes to know, is that my phone or is it not my phone? Oh, no, that almost felt like my phone, not my phone. So your RAS tunes your entire system to zero in on exactly what it wants to find all the time. And so the question, the real question becomes this, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? And this is big. Because when we don't give the universe direction, it goes into what's called default mode. 
or random shuffle mode. And what default mode and random shuffle mode is, is, oh, I think I like that. Oh, nope, don't like that anymore. Oh, I think I like this person. Oh, no, don't like that. Oh, maybe I want to do this. Maybe I want to do that. I don't know. It's like going to bark up every tree, not knowing what's going on, not being able to define what you should do, having no idea what directions to take, having no idea what decision is the right decision or wrong decision, having no idea how to trust your intuition, having to rely on everybody outside of yourself to make decisions for your life. And so this is what the RAS, when we ask the right questions, it takes us out of default mode because default mode keeps you stuck. Because listen up, this is how it works, okay? The RAS, what its job is, is to keep you safe, is to keep you in the same spot. And so if we don't set a vision forward, then what the RAS does is it just does its job, which is it keeps you in the same spot. It keeps you in this state of like equanimity. But if we start just like when you can look for your phone, if we set the vision of where we wanna go, then our RAS starts seeing things and looking for things that it didn't see before. And this is the thing. Have you ever noticed that this is like one of the most obvious ways? It has have any of you guys, anytime you've wanted to get a new car, okay? So let's say you wanted to get a new car and you started thinking about what cars you were gonna get. And you were like, maybe I wanna get a red Hyundai or something. And then you'll look around and you're driving and then all you're gonna see everywhere is red Hondas. You're gonna be like, oh my God, there's Honda. Like, why are there Hondas everywhere? You know, my mom right now is thinking of getting a new SUV. And my, right now, everywhere my mom looks, it's like, there's, oh my God, there's so many SUVs. Everybody has SUVs. It's because when you didn't even notice there were red Hondas before, you didn't even know there were SUVs before, right? Now your vision is set on something. So your RAS is noticing them so that you can start to integrate it and make the right choice in your life. Are you all following how this works as it relates to a vision? Yes, okay, I see you, I see you, I see you. So let's continue because this is really important. What a lot of people say in their lives is, I'm just gonna see what comes. I'm just gonna flow and I'm gonna just see what comes. I'm just gonna see what happens. I'm just gonna go with the flow. Listen to me, I'm talking to you. No, <laughs> okay, that's not how it works, okay? That's not how it works. Yes, there is a state of surrender, and I'm gonna get into that soon. Yes, there is being with the mystery of what comes in a way that you couldn't have expected, but absolutely not. Is it, let me just see what happens. Because there is a vision for your life. There is a reason God or the universe or spirit put you here. And our job is to connect in with that flow. Yes, there's a state of flow. Yes, there's a state of not forcing. But it's not, let me just see. Let me, let, I'll just see. I'm just gonna let life happen to me. This is the difference in between life happening to you and life happening for you, is us setting the vision. And so without a vision, okay, without a vision, y'all got me knocking on the screen today, okay? Without a vision, you have no way to make decisions. Without a vision, you don't know who to be. How could you? Because if we're manifesting, if we're reverse engineering the process, we have to start with what do you want to manifest? Question one, that's the vision. What is the vision? And then that helps you anchor into and understand who do you have to be to make that vision come to life. And so that's why step one of the whole process is the vision because that will help indicate to you, who do you have to become? And I love this quote, Karen Moses, who those of you who've been following me for a long time, who know business of yoga, Justin, in the little, in the little tie <laughs> and all of that, you know this quote from Karen, which is, there's no favorable wind for the sailor who has no destination in mind. You don't know what's good. You don't know what's bad. You don't know how to make a choice because if you don't have a destination in mind, 
there's no favorable wind. And so every move you make, every choice you make, every conversation you have, every clothing item you put on, everything you watch, every moment you choose to spend your time is either taking you closer to your vision or further away. There's no in between. There's no stagnation because we're moving. We're moving forward in our lives every day. And so every single step you take is either taking you closer to your vision or further away. And so a lot of people ask, right? A lot of people ask, well, what about all the stuff that happens in my life that I don't expect? What about all the things that happen in my life that are not planned, that I have to deal with? Like, did I manifest that? This is what you have to remember, okay? This leads me right into my second point here, which is this. Key number two is what I call becoming. Becoming. And this is, this is huge because we have to set the vision and then we have to leave space for the mystery. And this is what's gonna be on the cover of your manifest workbooks this year for New Year's is this. Here it comes eventually, here it is. It's not about your vision coming true exactly as you see it. It's about who you become in pursuit of that vision. It's not about the vision coming true exactly as you see it. It's not about the vision coming true exactly as you imagined it in your head. It's about who you become. That's the process in pursuit of the vision that is in alignment with the truth of your life. And we all have a story about this. So I know y'all love when I tell stories. So I'll tell you a very quick story here that some of you have heard. So when I put out my book, when I put out Stay Woke, which many of you have, and I'm super, super grateful for, we're actually getting the final year sales numbers in next week, which I'm really excited to see. It's just like nuts for me to imagine all of you with, with the book. And when I put out Stay Woke, many of you know that we planned this huge, huge, huge tour nationally and internationally for Stay Woke. We were going to high schools and colleges. We raised a quarter million dollars. We were going to give away 30,000 copies of the book for all these months, right? And so many of you know what happened in the, in the process with Stay Woke. What I did in January, which is why you guys have seen me in so many locations, is in January, I moved out of my home, okay? Moved out of my home, put everything into storage to go on this seven month tour. And then as the universe would have it, because remember, we're living in relationship to everyone and everything else. So we don't have complete control over everything. So what happened was COVID. So I went on three stops of this 25 city tour and then it was shelter in place. So here I am, okay, moved out of my apartment, <laughs> like get on this tour and it's like shelter in place. And I'm like, what place would you be thinking of, Corona? Miss COVID, what, co what place, you know? And then also the tour and this whole thing. So I had a moment, I did have a moment. I'll tell you guys, I had a moment where I had to grieve it, okay? Because I'd worked for two years, two years to this moment. And then it was just cut, right? So watch the magic, okay? So when you go into the vision, what's the most important part of the vision is about the impact and about who you are becoming in pursuit of that vision. That is the key, not it manifesting exactly as it looks, because most of the times it'll manifest a little bit differently. But if you anchor into, this is where you gotta check your ego, okay? This is where you have to check your ego. If you anchor into who you're becoming, the truth of who you're becoming, and not what it looks like, not the success, not this, not that, then you can still go on your process of becoming no matter what the universe throws your way. And so for me, with this story, what happened after I got out of my ego and got out of my way, oh, my tour got canceled, you know, the whole thing, I said, okay, what is the real reason I did this? Who is it that I am becoming? And I said, I am becoming 
someone who empowers people in marginalized communities, especially students who don't have access to information like this. We were going on a huge high school and college tour. And so I said, the students need this shit now even more than they needed it when we were in person because now everyone's at home sheltering in place. So I said, how can I still, how can I still, this is the part of you can't fake it, continue to commit to becoming that person that the universe was making me into. COVID for me, just like all the challenges in your life, COVID for me and the tour getting canceled for me was a test, was the universe test saying, are you really committed to becoming this, Justin? Or do you just wanna be famous on a whole bunch of stages? Are you really committed to making an impact? Or did you really just wanna have pictures of you going and doing this on these big stages? And so when I got true about saying, no, I'm committed to the becoming, to the impact, everything unlocked. We've ended up doing, check this out. In the last several months, we started a virtual tour again in May, and then it picked up again in September. We've reached more students virtually now than we would have reached with my whole tour. Because now my RAS was not tuned to see what's wrong, what's going to happen, blah, blah, blah. Do you see what happens? My RAS switched. The RAS was focused on, Justin, given what's happening now, how can you still step into this becoming? Okay? And so by stepping into this becoming, I was able to see things differently. And I saw and presented to Sounds True Listen, my publisher, what they wanted to do was pause the whole thing until we were in person again. If I allowed that to happen at first, what would have happened is this thing would still be on pause. So I started focusing my RAS and I started seeing opportunities. And then I showed them, you guys, we raised a quarter million dollars. Instead of going to 25 schools, we can go to 50. We could go to 75 schools if we do it virtually and we could send them the books and here's how it's gonna work. And so we've reached more kids this way than we ever would have reached. And somebody already said it here, I got to start the kingdom and I got to do the liberation experience and I got to stay healthy and not have to travel all over the place. So check it out. Most of you are saying that 2020, my vision didn't come true, everything this, no. It's because we get too hooked on how we think it's supposed to look and we get too hooked on our ego instead of being true about who it is that we're meant to become. Who is God trying to make you into? Who is it that you're trying to become? That's the part that we wanna let come to us. That's the part that we want to be in flow with. Not not creating a vision. Okay, so I'm telling you this story because there are things that are going to happen in your life that seem like they're throwing you off track. And what they are is a test to see, can you anchor in to the true becoming? What is it that you are becoming? Who is it, rather, that you are becoming in pursuit of the vision. That's it. That's it. Woo. Sometimes it just takes me off. <laughs> so, so let me come back, okay? Let me come back to the slides. So let's continue. Y'all taking notes? So let me go into number three. Feeling. Y'all remember the numbers? Somebody type them in for me. Number one was vision. Number two was becoming. Number three is feeling. Somebody type those in for me here so that we have them. And I see a couple questions in the chat I just want to see. There we go. Ah, okay, great, 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 great. Okay, I see these here. I'll get to some, I'll get to some of these. So here's number three. It's called feeling. This is a big one. Okay, this is one that I've learned only in this past year. And some of you who have practice at manifesting will know this. 
It's as you're imagining your vision, you have to anchor in to how it feels, to how it feels more than you're anchoring into how it looks. Now, I, I know I already talked about it's not about how it looks, but there's two way, there's two angles we can take from this. So one of not worrying about how it looks. So first of all, I'll just say this, not worrying about how it looks is just a rule. I should have that as its own key. But from that, not worrying about how it looks, you can almost see two lines going down, like a graph or like a chart, okay? And one of those goes to becoming, not worrying about how it looks is at the top. One of those comes to becoming, and the other line leads to feeling, anchor into how it feels. Because not worrying about how it looks is gonna help you become something, but then if you wanna manifest, this is the key. And this is what I mean by anchoring into how it feels. It's this. When you close your eyes and imagine your vision, okay? I'm manifest, one of the things I'm manifesting in my life right now is a partner, right? Not like a boyfriend, not like a, a hookup, okay? But like somebody who is worth my time, okay? And can meet me and the energy. And so what a lot of us do, because I know a lot of people are manifesting partners or homes or jobs or businesses or whatever, it all works the same way. What a lot of people make the mistake of, and I'll use the relationship example, because this is one that a lot of us use, is they go in their vision and they imagine this person, right? And so then you write down all the things and every time you go back into your vision, you're like, he got big lips and he got brown hair and he's six feet tall and he got this and he got these abs and he got a six pack and he has this job and he has money and he has this and he has that, right? So, and we're all guilty of this, okay? So we're, we're looking, we're closing our eyes, we're creating a vision and then what happens is we start trying to manifest how it looks, okay? What you have to go into, this was a key for me, and I only learned this this year as I've been manifesting a few things, is instead of focusing on how it looks, you can let yourself go there. You have to focus on how it feels to be in the presence of what it is that you're manifesting. Follow me here. This is probably the most important key. As you, and we're gonna practice this in a moment. This is gonna be our practice today. When you close your eyes and imagine the vision, you'll first visualize, because that'll take you into the space. But the only reason we're visualizing or writing the vision is to get you to the feeling. That's the only reason we're even doing that part. Because what happens is, if you know how it feels to be in the presence of what you're manifesting, if you know how it feels to be in the presence of your vision, then you will know in your life when it shows up. Because it won't show up the way you think it's gonna look. He ain't gonna show up looking exactly how you think it's gonna look. The house that you want is not gonna look exactly as you see it in your head, unless you could build it yourself you know, the art, the career, the music, the tour, the everything, the money, the job, the purpose, it's not gonna show up exactly as you see it. But what it can show up as is how it feels. And what happens to so many of us is the opportunity that we've been waiting for shows up in our lives. But because we're so focused on how it looks, our RAS is tuned to some other thing and we miss it. We miss it. We miss the opportunity altogether because we're focused on how it looks. But if you focus on how it feels, then when you experience it in your life, you'll know what it feels like. And so you're practicing being with the feeling. Are you following me? This is it. So this is how it all ties together. I told you I had an upgrade on my manifesting this year. So when you're trying to manifest that partner, when you're trying to manifest a thing, how does it feel to be with them? I know, like I already know. I've been, I've been feeling what it's like to be with my partner for like months right now. So that I know, I'm not confused when someone comes up, ooh, should I be dating them? No, I know. Mm -mm. It don't feel like that. It feels safe. I feel held. It feels secure. It feels present. It feels easy. It feels like rest. It feels 
supportive. It feels communicative. It feels like there's mutual love and respect and no guessing. It feels like love. It feels like mutual, mutual, mutual desire, equally met in our own personal work so that we can show up fully for the situation. And so that's it. You know, like this is how it feels. And so when, I'm, when I meet somebody or somebody's trying to date me or whatever, I already know, no, this ain't how it feels. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and so how does it feel to be in that house? How does it feel to be in that job? How does it feel to do that? Because it's gonna look different than you expect. And I don't want you to miss it. You have to tune your RAS to the feeling, okay? To the feeling. And I have a few other things that it feels like, but I won't tell y'all about that on here. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I had to give you a joke. I had to give you a joke. Okay, so let's continue, all right? I'm gonna give you a bonus. I didn't know if we would have time for this today, but we do. I'm gonna give you a bonus because there's a lot more. And this is a lot of what we're talking about right now. This is like what we're covering in the programs and the things to really help us manifest. This is where we're going. And it's not just gonna be about one day, right? One day teaching. like. This is why I created the 40 day program so that we can hold each other accountable. We can talk to each other. We could be in community. You can have an accountability buddy. We could be working through this every day. And so anyway, I'll tell y'all how to get on the wait list for that at the end. Some of you already are. So bonus number four is called shadow. Now, a lot of you who've done the liberation experience, or the different programs with me know how important it is, it is that you focus on your shadow. Because as we're talking about manifesting, one of the things that we constantly and often do is we spiritually bypass the hard work. We think that it's only about the light. We think that the only thing we have to do is think positive. The only thing that we have to do is keep our minds right, is who you become. Check it out. Who you become, that part of the vision, isn't just about the light because we are equal parts, light and shadow. We have all of that happening inside of us. And so when Magdalena asked this wonderful question of like, don't you just have to be who you are? Well, a big problem with that is that a lot of who we are and who we're being and what our RAS is tuned to is our shadow, is our trauma, is our conditioning, is our wounding, is our pain, is the stuff that's in our blind spot that we're not seeing. And so what I always say, I remember Sianna Sherman, who's a great friend of mine and an amazing teacher. She'll actually be a special guest on Manifest this year. Um, she said, Justin, the bigger the light, the bigger the shadow. And I have to be honest with y'all, I, I was totally like, I was not a shadow work kind of person. Everybody in my life knows. I was like running away from my shadow. I was for years, just until like five years ago. You know, I was not wanting to face that past. I was like, we don't need to do that. We just need to think positive, send love and light, focus on elevating my vibration and everything will be good. But what I've learned is that it's not just about the light. You also must understand your shadow. And I look at it like this. This is how I look at it in my whole life. It's 50% light work and 50% shadow work. That is the equation of you changing your becoming. If you're skipping the shadow work, if you're skipping that part, then you can't actually become. It's like, it's like, I say this in the book, it's like watering a garden full of weeds and expecting roses to bloom. It's like driving with your foot on the gas pedal and the brake at the same time. And so if we wanna move forward into our becoming, we have to learn how to not just press on the gas, which is the light work, which is the positive, we also have to learn how to take our foot off the brake and feel safe to do that so that we don't stay stuck. And so a lot of people skip the shadow part. And this is why I'm gonna focus so much on that in our 40 Days to Transformation program because the shadow part of the equation, a lot of people don't have money for therapy, don't have, don't have somebody that they trust to do this stuff but you can start anchoring into it on your own if you have the tools. And that's one of the big things I'm committed to giving us in 2021 is the tools, the practical tools to start seeing this stuff take action. You know, I've been saying like, we've listened now. Y'all have listened. We've listened to a lot of podcasts. 
You've come to a lot of the kingdoms. We've listened to a lot of books and audiobooks and the whole thing. How do you now start putting that into action? That's what we're focusing on in the 40 day program and also in 2021. And so for all of you who are doing the becoming work, I'm going to go back to this slide real quick. Where is it? Slide number. Here we go. So when we go back to this becoming work right here, what do you want to manifest? And who do you have to be to manifest that? What you have to remember is that the equation of the becoming part is 50% light, 50% shadow. And that's what I spent. I did two, two, two different seven day shadow work retreats this year, did do my personal therapy every single week, and I listen to podcasts, and I'm motivated. Now, I'm also crazy, okay? So that's why I'm here teaching you guys. But I'm giving you all this so you know how to do the work, all right? Okay, I think it's time for a little practice, shall we? I think it's time for a little practice. So we're gonna do a practice right now that's gonna give you the experience, just a super, super brief experience of anchoring into the vision and then practicing the part of anchoring into how it feels. The rest of it we'll be able to do together on New Year's and beyond, all right? So I'd like you to place your hands over your heart. Close your eyes. Feel that swirl of energy moving through you right now. And then take a full deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Again, a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And just get still. Let yourself be here now. There's nowhere to go. If you're doing anything else, just give yourself a second, two minutes, to see what arises here. Nowhere to run to, nowhere to be. You're not failing, you're not doing anything wrong. So I want you to think of something that you're trying to manifest in your life right now. Anything, but be specific about it. Don't think of five things or six things. Think of something you're trying to manifest in your life right now. And now I want you to imagine a future version of yourself who has that thing. So this is the part where we are giving ourselves permission to go into the vision of what it looks like, but only to lead us into the feeling. So right now, what does it look like? And you can use all your senses imagining a future you who has manifested this thing, who has been caught in the act, who has been revealed. And I want you to notice as you look at this future version of you, are you indoor or are you outdoor in this vision right now? Is there anybody there with you or are you alone? What color might this future you be wearing? And just scan around you in the vision right now and notice without trying to force it, do you hear anything in the vision? We're just using our senses to wake it up. Do you see anything in the vision? Can you see any colors or textures or furniture, or things around you in the environment, even if it's fuzzy or blurry or incomplete? What do you see? Do you taste anything? Don't force it. If you don't taste anything, don't try to taste it. Just notice what arises. Do you feel anything in your physical body kinesthetically? Is there a temperature or something touching your skin as you look at this future you who has already manifested it? 
And then now we get to the important part. How does it feel? How does this future you feel to be living the life of your dreams? To have manifested this thing? What does it feel like to be that version of you? How does it feel? And you may come up with words that describe how it feels. But you may also just feel a sensation in your emotional body or in your physical body that goes beyond the words. So notice if there are any words that describe how it feels, and if there's any sensations in your body that describes how it feels as you look at this future you who has revealed what it is that you're trying to manifest. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And then put all of that in a little bubble. Imagine putting that whole vision in a little bubble and then offering it up, letting it float up to the divine, to the universe. Letting it float up and closing it out with the universe and saying, all of this or something better that I haven't even imagined yet. All of this, I trust you. We trust in the divine or something better still. And then we open to the mystery. And then we open to the mystery. eyes when you're ready. So this leads me into our action. So first of all, I'd love for you all to type in to the chat box. would love for you to type into the chat box what it felt like for you. Okay? Because that's the part that you want to anchor into. And this leads me into our action for this week. Okay, I'm giving you a very clear action this week. Two things you can do. Number one, if you have not already, I want you to sign up for Manifest New Year's Eve. If you haven't been to this with me already, I'm just telling you it's one of my favorite things that I've ever done. If I could only do one program for the rest of my life, it would be this one. Because what we're doing is on New Year's Eve, during the day, so on the 31st, during the day at 11 a.m. Pacific time, 2 p.m. Eastern time, what we're doing is we're coming together for a three-hour masterclass with incredible special guests this year. They're going to blow you away. I have a young Pueblo, who many of you know, who wrote the book Inward, Dr. Tema, Dr. Dan Siegel, Siana Sherman, Christy Christensen, Vanessa Inn, Dr. Sarah King. So just ama the Brothers Corin, we're having amazing guests for a three-hour masterclass to take this deeper with a workbook that's been completely redesigned for 2021. That's gonna help you bring your vision to life. And I'm putting the link here for you all in the chat box. So that's how you get onto Manifest. The best thing is it's free. So you just go to manifestnye.com. And if you can't make it, there's a recording. It's okay, because I know a lot of people are working and stuff during that time but it's one of my favorite things. And it started literally in my living room with a few friends and now has grown into this global thing. And then secondly, the 40 Days to Transformation program. So I'm putting a link here in the chat box for you all who are here live. But what you should know is that if you go to justinmichaelwilliams.com and click 40 Days to Transformation in the chat box, I mean, 40 Days to Transformation in my menu bar, then you will find a link to that. And the 40 Days to Transformation program is really about this. It's not about creating your vision. It's about living it. It's about living the vision with 40 micro 
realistic steps and 40 mini practices that you'll get via audio. They're like 12 minutes long every day and live sessions with me and special guests and a workbook. And you're going to blow your way. So to get on the wait list, you just go to justinmichaelwilliams.com and uh, I'm doing a special sale for the wait list next week before it opens up to the public. All right. So these are your actions. And just so you know, there's scholarships for the 40 days. So if you feel like you can't afford it, when the pricing comes out, first of all, there's a special price for people who are on the wait list. But if you feel like you can't afford it or money's tight, because I know we're in a challenging time, I have unlimited scholarships for people who are in need. All right. Let me tell you your final action. From now, between now and then, here's what I want you to be doing. That thing that you want to manifest every day, just for a few minutes. It doesn't have to be this long, drawn-out thing. Imagine it, and as soon as you can, anchor into how it feels. And when you can feel it in your body, when you can feel it, offer it to the universe and let it go. And give yourself to the great mystery of life. You are worthy. You deserve this in every way possible. And so as we close, what I'd like to do is our golden nugget practice, which is especially fun for those of you who are new. Here's the golden nugget, is all you have to do is place your hands over your heart, close your eyes. I've given you a lot today, but we're not gonna remember it all. I want you to choose what is the one thing, if you could pick one thing to remember from today, what is the one thing that you would like to remember from this session, from everything you learned? And it takes 25 to 30 seconds to commit something to the long-term memory, so just think about it for a moment. Once you have it, open your eyes and type it into the chat box. And this is your golden nugget. And I see so many of you typing in the chat box today. And I see so many of you stayed all the way till the end, which is amazing. And I love, I love all the love you're giving each other in the chat box. All right? If anybody has any questions, just know you can reach out to me and my team by writing to support at justinmichaelwilliams.com just in case there's questions that I didn't get to here. And type in your golden nuggets. Leave space for the mystery. Practice feeling it. That's it. We have to become it. Feeling it, feeling it, feeling it. Beautiful. Anchor into how it feels. That's the biggest thing. You have to be able to balance the light and the dark to rise up from the ashes. 50-50 shadow work. Y'all got it. Manifest is revealing. So as we close out on our power of manifesting, I think what I'd like to do <laughs> is leave us with a little song. And for those of you who are new, one of the things that we've done in our community is we wrote a song called Unbounded. But when we were in the liberation experience, we also wrote a song called Into the Light of Infinity. And I would love to play that for you all right now. And I'm gonna put, well, I can't put the lyrics up on the screen, but I would like to put the lyrics up on the screen. So Into the Light is a song that we wrote in the liberation experience that is super special and important to me. And I'm gonna play it for you all right now. And I would love for you to just listen to the lyrics. Stand up and As we rise walk together. With me. Stand up and walk with me. One love and we'll be free. One love and we'll be free. Bring your broken heart to me. Bring your broken heart to me. Your shadow is safe to see.
to the light infinity liberation sets us free liberation sets us free forgiveness gives us peace forgiveness gives us peace open the door to equality close with our closing prayer. God, Spirit, Universe, all that is, all that ever has been, and all that ever will be, we thank you. Thank you for bringing us together here at the kingdom. Thank you for giving us the tools to change our lives and our minds. Thank you for giving us the tools to manifest. May everyone here be protected and healthy and well, and may we spread the light of love and infinity out to all who we love and all who we know and out into every corner of the world. Thank you for bringing us together. So it is. Ashe, Aho, Salam, Amen, Satnam, Om. Thank you. And this is the power of manifesting. This is Justin Michael Williams signing out. I love you guys so much. And I'll see you right here in this special place in our next session. Bye for now.